As a consultant or a consulting firm, you basically have four types of specializations. These four directions that you can go down are brought to us from Hinge Marketing, which has been analyzing data for a very long time on what the most successful professional service firms do. Now, before I explain what those four directions or choices are, I want to tell you that they are not mutually exclusive. You could choose just to go with one of these specializations, but you can also choose to layer them and have multiple specializations built upon each other. And of course, this is going to depend on how big of a target customer group you want to go after. If it's a tiny group, then you might want to perhaps go with all four specializations. But if you want a, a bigger market to participate in, then you're going to want to go perhaps with just one specialization. So what are they? Number one, you specialize by the target client or the target customer. This is the easiest, the simplest. The reason is that when you make the strategic cho choice, it makes your go-to-market decisions much, much easier. So, for example, targeting through advertising and direct mail, it's much easier to know who to go after when you're defining your strategy based on who the customers are. The other thing is that it makes defining the value proposition a lot easier because all you really need to do is interview some people that represent your target customers, figure out how they articulate their problem or their need, and then use that very language in the description of what it is that you're selling. And you're able to continuously gather research based on who those target customers are. So by default, I would say that when you're running a consulting firm, the first specialization you can cons can consider is basically specializing in terms of a specific industry or a specific type of client or customer. The second is a little more difficult when we're talking about targeting. Now, before I get into that though, I just wanna give you some examples of why the targeting would be so easy when you're specializing by target customers. So for example, dual citizens. Well, you could see if there's a database out there that has a list of dual citizens. You could see if somebody could compile a list of dual citizens for you. You could target meetup groups or other professionals that cater to dual citizens. Similarly, if you were targeting an industry like SaaS companies, I purchased a list of SaaS companies, about 7,000 fast growing companies and their CEOs, and I paid between $200 and $300 for that list. So it was very easy to do the targeting, and, and then I can hit those people through email, advertising, et cetera. Now the second one is by problem solved. It's by people that are experiencing a specific problem. It's a bit more difficult to identify who those people are because the fact that they have a specific problem doesn't really define who they are on LinkedIn or on Facebook or on a list out there somewhere on the internet or from a list broker. So the targeting becomes more uh, nebulous and based more on things like what are they searching for rather than who they are. So what are some examples of problems that you as a consultant might solve? Well, maybe there are complications with businesses as they expand from the United States into Canada or from Europe into Canada. So you become a specialist in solving that problem, the transition to the Canadian market. And you help people, uh, you help them, you guide them through that transition, through that process. Another would be a lawsuit. So somebody gets hit with a lawsuit where there are gonna be multiple implications there, you can help with that. You can help with specific types of lawsuits. Maybe there's a virus attack and you're a, a consultant that helps deal with that and helps mitigate the risks in the future as well as uh, the, meeting the immediate and urg urgent needs. You could also be a specialist in like integration issues. So maybe they're running into problems integrating with specific ERPs or something. Maybe uh, your services have to do with alleviating those pains. All right, so the first was target clients. Second is problem solved. The third is the services that you offer. So for example, there are lots of digital media consultants out there. Maybe you're an expert in LinkedIn advertising, or maybe you're even more specific than that. You're lead generation LinkedIn advertising. You can get very, very specific if you want to uh, within these niches. Another service might be you help with mergers and acquisitions. So there's a lot of money to be made in that type of consulting because it's big, it's important, it has a huge dramatic impact on growth. So uh, people are definitely gonna have their wallets open and willing when, when that sort of need arises for that type of service. 
You could also specialize in something like bankruptcy, which might be a bit challenging if you're going after small companies that are going bankrupt because they're not going to have a lot of money. But certainly uh, with big companies where perhaps it's a strategic choice to bankrupt, uh, then you can consider that as a specialization. The last one I have here is the business model. Now this is a specialization that perhaps is a little more rare that you don't run into as much, perhaps one that not a lot of people consider. Um, now in a lot of industries, what you may find is that people charge for time. And this is what you see with most consultants. They're gonna charge for their time or they're gonna charge for fixed price. And often the fixed price is really just time, but it's been packaged in the form of a, a fixed project. So you can get creative with this and you can say, okay, well, if most consultants are just charging for their time and that inherently caps how much they can earn and how much clients are willing to pay, then maybe what I'm gonna do is charge for performance. I'm gonna ask for a percentage of transaction volume. So for example, let's say you're consulting e-commerce companies and you say, well, uh, you have 100 orders per month and I'm gonna charge you 5% of the orders that I manage or uh, somebody has 10,000 orders a month, then you're gonna charge more because the value that you bring to the table is, is much, much bigger. And later on, what I'm gonna do is talk about different pricing schemes that you can develop as a consultant. You could also do something like percentage of new customer revenue that's brought in as a result of campaigns that you manage. Or Let's take another example. So a lot of companies now, what they're doing is they're relying on monthly subscriptions and often what they try to do is lock people into yearly subscriptions to make them more captive. Well, maybe what you would do instead is do a daily subscription. You could get more creative or an hourly subscription. You pay per hour of usage of an application. Is that something you've ever considered? So the business model can get very, very creative. The other thing that you can do is you can take what's standard in one industry so for example, something like a fixed cost project that you might expect uh, with construction or a lot of consulting projects. If people are typically used to paying uh, an uncertain uh, hourly rate, like they don't really know how many hours you're gonna spend on it and you're coming in with a fixed cost proposal, uh, then you actually have a unique business model that you can work with. So those are the four types of specializations. So I'm gonna repeat them again. The target customer, the problem solved, the service offered in the business model and you can either go with one or multiple of those layered one among another.